Hi all, welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to cover the psychopathology of everyday things, Norman's fundamental principles of interaction. So, let's get started. In the previous video, we learned that whenever we interact with an object, we need to discover what it does, how it works, and what are the operations possible. Discoverability and understanding are the two main characteristics of a good design. Product should be designed in an human-centered approach to make human-machine interactions pleasurable. Discoverability results from appropriate application of the following fundamental principles of interaction, which are affordances, signifiers, constraints, mappings, feedback, and conceptual model. So, let us understand them one by one. Affordances an affordance is a relationship between the properties of an object and the capabilities of the agent that determine just how the object could possibly be used. For example, a chair affords for sitting, but a chair can also be lifted by a single person. Hence, it also affords for lifting for a person who is strong enough to lift the chair. Thus, presence of an affordance is jointly determined by the qualities of the object and the abilities of the agent that is interacting. To be effective, affordances must be discoverable, that is, perceivable. Now, let us understand what are perceived, actual, and anti affordances. Perceived affordances are the perceived properties of an object that suggest how the object could be used. For example, a knob suggests that we can open the door by turning the knob left or right. A handle on the cup suggests that it affords for lifting the cup. Actual affordances are the actual actionable properties of an object. Both perceived and actual affordances must be same, else confusions may occur. For example, if a door with a handle slides instead of being pushed or pulled, it can create confusion as the perceived affordances are push or pull, but the actual affordance is actually sliding the door. An anti-affordance is the prevention of an interaction. For example, a glass door affords transparency, but it blocks the passage of air or someone passing through it which is called as anti-affordance. Now, let us move on to signifiers. Affordances determine what actions are possible, whereas signifiers communicate where the action should take place. Signifiers refer to any mark or sound or any perceivable indicator that communicates appropriate behavior to a person. Perceived affordances can often act as signifiers, but they can be ambiguous. For example, door handle. It can either indicate push or pull operation in order to open the door. Thus, in that case, a perceived signifier can help to resolve the ambiguity. For example, a push label on the door can help to resolve the ambiguity of opening the door. The next principle is mapping. Mapping is the relationship between the elements of two sets of things. The relationship between the control and its result is easiest to understand whenever there is an understandable mapping between them. Grouping and proximity are important principles that we can use to map controls to their functions. These principles suggest that related controls should be grouped together and control should be close to the item being controlled. Let us understand with some examples. In the gas stove, there is a visual mapping of the stove controls to the elements or burners. Thus, we can easily identify which knob controls which gas burner. The next is an example of a Mercedes seat control which is in the shape of the seat. This indicates natural mapping where the control follows same spatial organization as that of the object being controlled, which is seat. Now, let us understand feedback. Feedback is the way of communicating the results of an action. A feedback must be immediate and informative. For example, a simple beep sound only conveys that something has happened, but fails to convey what has exactly happened. Feedback has to be planned and given in a way that is unobstructive. Thus, a feedback must also be prioritized so that unimportant information is presented in an unobstructive fashion, whereas important signals are to be presented in a way that captures attention. 
For example, washing machine gives the feedback on the wash stage and the timer but gives so in an unobstructive way using the digital display but produces a beeping sound on completion of the load. Now let us understand the next principle which is constraints. Constraints limit the possible actions that are perceived from the object's appearance. The more the constraints, less is the opportunity for an error. Providing physical, logical, semantic and cultural constraints guides action and ease interpretations. For example, using a date picker instead of a text box for entering dates avoids all possibilities of invalid dates and syntax mismatch. Now, let us understand the last principle, which is conceptual model. Conceptual model or mental model are the models in the people's mind that represent their understanding of how things work. The major cues of how things work come from the perceived structure, from affordances, signifiers, constraints and mappings. Thus, we form a conceptual model about a device from information like what the device looks like, what was told to us by the salesperson or the advertisements, what is written in instruction manual and the product website. This combined information available to us is called the system image. A good conceptual model helps us in predicting how things will behave and what will be the effects of our action. We have understood the fundamental principles of interaction. Now, let us understand them together using some examples. Let us start with a good design example, which are scissors. Here, the affordances are the two holes of different sizes. The signifiers are that the big hole indicates big space for fingers, whereas small hole on the scissor indicates that there is a small space for thumb. Constraints are the size of the hole and mapping provides proper mapping between fingers and the hole size. Thus, we can see that scissors are an example of good design which satisfies all fundamental principles of interaction and successfully help us form a conceptual model about using a scissor. Now, let us take an example of a bad design. For example, consider a digital watch with three buttons. Here, the affordances are the three buttons, but we cannot clearly understand what each does. There are no signifiers given, so a person needs to refer some user manual. And there is no clear mapping provided between the buttons and the functionalities that they perform. Thus, a bad design fails to create a good system image, which in turn fails to create a conceptual model about using a particular device. For example, here this digital watch. That's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any doubts, please do let us know in the comment section below. If you have liked the content, then do not forget to like and share the video with your friends and subscribe to be the best channel for more such videos. Meet you in the next video of the HMI series. Bye-bye.